Today, I'm going to be showing off one of probably the worst distros I have ever tried. Most of the time, distros that are just bad are kind of subjectively bad. Like Ubuntu, for example, I just don't like how it pushes snaps and Manjaro. There's just a lot of things I don't like about Manjaro. <laughs> but there are people who like those two distros, and so I can't really argue with them because they can have their own opinions. I'm not going to be shoving my own opinions down people's throats. However, today I'm going to be showing off a distro that in theory looks cool, but it no one should run this distro. Like, this is an objectively bad distro. Like, if you like this distro for some reason, you're probably just going to like it just because it looks cool and you don't really know what you're doing or talking about in the Linux world. Honestly, if I ever see someone give this distro a good review, I'm, I'm just not going to trust them anymore with anything. Nobody should be running this godforsaken Linux distro. Like, I am getting angry in filming this intro right now. Like, this distro is that bad. It makes me angry to look at and use. Anyways, let's just jump into it. Alright, so we have the LinuxFX website right here, and let's just quickly go through some of its features. It's got a friendly interface, which is just a clone of Windows. It's got Android app support, and we'll check that out in a little bit. Microsoft applications, so... Office Online, and then whatever Microsoft applications work on Linux. WX Desktop Interface, uh, okay. Personal Assistant, um, okay. Didn't Windows 11 remove Cortana because no one was using it? Or I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Hold up. Oh, okay, I'm wrong. It's only for the first boot experience, whatever. And then EXE and MSI apps using Wine, blah, blah, blah. Then we have a cinnamon version, which is supposed to look like Windows 10, although I don't think it does that good of a job. It just this looks like a Windows 10 theme on top of Linux Mint, but the impressive one is it's Windows 11 theme based on Plasma. Now, one weird thing this distro does is it tries to paywall everything. I somewhat understand a paywall distro like Zorn OS Pro, where you basically just get a couple bonus features and user support, but you're mainly paying to support the development of Zorn OS Pro, or I guess the Zorn OS free version. However, here, some of the main features that they're advertising all the way up here are, are locked behind a paywall. So if you don't want to pay for these features, there is literally no reason to use this distro other than the fact that it looks like Windows. So I will not be supporting these developers because of how sketchy this distro is behind the scenes, which I'll get into later. They claim to have 15 million downloads. This has been disputed, but they do supply proof right here from the SourceForge, so okay. And enough talking, let's just get to the distro itself. Now, even though I consider this to be one of the worst Linux distros that I've ever seen, I still find it somewhat impressive. Like, as we're booting in here, they did put a lot of polish into making it look like Windows. We have like a Windows-like login screen right here. I'm actually going to set it to Wayland because I think Wayland runs slightly better in VMs. Oh, actually the Plasma Wayland session isn't themed at all. <laughs> I, I was just talking about polish, but I might have spoke too soon. I guess we're going to have to switch back to the Xorg session in order to get the custom themes that they supplied. So this distro is anti Wayland, so I guess you're forced to use Xorg if you want the benefits. But it does have polish, like that's a Windows uh, like boot screen. So it is quite impressive, like there are some interesting features in here, like uh, it's, oh I was testing this earlier, I forgot Plasma has like saved Windows. But its setting manager is quite impressive, this is a setting manager built from scratch, different from Plasma's setting manager, and it looks just like Windows 11 does. What? What the hell just happened? What? Quality. A few moments later. Okay. What the hell is going on? I, I'm actually confused. It, it's prompting me for an update now, I think. Why, is, why isn't this going just going through apt? Why is this a separate thing? Oh, it is going through apt. But why does it have to like prompt me? Why well, can't it just update it when I update the rest of the system? I would honestly rather use Windows 11 in S mode than use this piece of garbage. Alright, it's saying I am in trial mode. I am not activating this. Let's just quickly go through just some quick system stuff just to look through it. So it does have like a Windows 11 like start menu. Like if someone who's somewhat technical even, like not even just your mom, like someone who actually knows their way around computers, 
you could probably fool them a little bit thinking this is Windows 11 until they like try and go in the control panel or something. Anyways, we have a lot of pre-installed junk that most people aren't going to use, and there's a lot of proprietary stuff on here for no reason. For example, why is AnyDesk installed on here out of the box? It's not even a Windows 11 thing. It's not like every Microsoft Windows install comes with AnyDesk or even any remote desktop software for that matter. What's this chat app right here? It's Okay, it's just Microsoft Teams. Chrome, Aloha. I'll check that out later because that's like their Cortana clone. Cody's on here for some reason. We have our Linux FX tools, Microsoft Office Online, but also we have only Office down here. Steam's on here. There's just a bunch of apps that like shouldn't be pre-installed on here at all. Edge is the default browser. I don't mind Edge. I find it to be Linux's best PDF reader, but it's weird to have Edge as a default browser for a Linux distro. Now let's look at some of these Linux FX apps. We have Linux FX Android. Um, could not find any Android. Okay. Just download it. Is this just going to run a VM with Prime OS? What is this? I'm pretty sure this is literally just going to run Android inside of QMU. Like, come on, if you're going to do Android apps, at least do it creatively, like using WayDroid or Anbox, just something native. Why just a VM with Android in it? Yeah, this is literally just Prime OS in a VM. Wow. All right, guys, I'm going to be adding Android app to Rizzy OS, and it's just going to be Prime OS in QMU, guys. Linux FX Device Manager. Uh, this is just hard info, I think. I think this, hold on, let me check. Yeah, this is hard info. It's rebranded hard info as device manager. That's cringe. I'm getting more and more disappointed as this Linux distro goes on. Like, I still think the theming on this distro is impressive. It's very aesthetically pleasing, and you could probably fool some people into thinking this is Windows. But it's, this distro is just lipstick on a pig, because it has just a bunch of pre-installed crap that no one's going to use, and a lot of it is proprietary. It's very bloated, like again, we have all the online Microsoft Office apps plus only Office. I like only Office, but if having both is kind of extreme. Why, what, how does, <laughs> what? I don't like anything about this distro. I can't. This is Helloa right here. I would test this, but there's no way I'm connecting this sketchy piece of software to my Google account. There is literally nothing on here that needs a Google account right here. Kind of gone through everything that's interesting about this distro, but let's go through some of the controversies. Because just like Windows, this distro has some data collection. In fact, not only do they collect data, but they actually had a data leak, and it got leaked in the funniest way possible. All this guy did to receive this data leak is install BPF Trace, monitor for MySQL connections, try and activate Linux FX. And then he was able to get the entire database login for the database, and he just ran that through MySQL dump. Can't get any sadder. Then they tried to fix it by making it even easier to hack. You were literally able to get the entire SQL database login just by curling this URL. If you want to learn more about this, DistroTube actually made two really good videos about this. I recommend they. He has this one right here, which uh, goes over this article. And then he has a second one for this article right here. Overall, if you're thinking about trying this distro, don't. It's literally just Linux trying to be as close to Windows as possible. But the thing is, there's a reason you aren't using Windows if you're using Linux. If you really want an operating system, pre-installed proprietary software you're never going to use. And if you really want to get spied on, just use Microsoft Windows. In fact, I would trust Windows far more than this distro. I don't trust this distro at all, like not one bit. This feels like, you know, those Chinese knockoff phones you can buy on Wish that run like a custom fake version of iOS if it's an iPhone knockoff. This feels like that, but for a PC operating system. That's what this feels like using. I would also not recommend even running this in a virtual machine because they have been caught with the SQL database data leak. I just wouldn't trust them at all on my network or anything. And overall, anyone who gives this distro a good review should immediately lose all credibility. They're the type of people who are probably just going to recommend a distro just because it looks cool while doing no other research. This is the perfect example of one of the main problems Linux has with all of those distro with a theme distros that are just a reskinned Ubuntu or Arch. And overall, 
I would rate this distro a 0 out of 10. The two distros I mentioned earlier that I don't like, Ubuntu and Manjaro, I would in a heartbeat pick those two compared to this. In fact, I think I mentioned this in the video earlier too. I'd rather run Windows 11 in S mode than run this piece of garbage. Anyways, that's the video. Thanks to my Patreon supporters who contribute $5 or more, Frank, Tech Cut, Jim Peter, Sam Covet, and Mitchell Vantino, and I'll see you in the next video.